Hello everyone and welcome back to Deciphering Weather. In today's video, we're going to discuss back-to-back -back tropical storms possibly forming in the wake of Tropical Storm Alberto. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Now before we get to this video, I do have a quick promotion I'd like to point out. I'm on a bowling team that I play on every Wednesday night and we have what's called a theme week. And we did Bob Ross this time. And there's another team that also did Bob Ross. So I'd like you, if you could, in the link in the description or in the comments, please go to my Instagram page and we uh, for Long Island Kick and vote for our team here to win theme week. Thank you. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin, thanks to tropicaltibits.com. And we have Tropical Storm now, Tropical Depression, Alberto, made landfall this morning with Mexico and is inland now. Invest 92L is just east of Florida and north of the Bahamas, has a 40% chance of becoming a tropical storm. We have Disturbance 2, another Central American gyro system trying to form right behind Alberto. And then we have three tropical waves that we're monitoring for possible development as well. Here's our vorticity map showing the spin and energy of all of our systems that we are monitoring. And here is Alberto, now a tropical depression, made landfall early this morning with Mexico. It is bringing a ton of rainfall to the region and is got winds of 35 miles per hour and has increased its wind, its uh, speed now west at 18 miles an hour. So it's getting out of here rather quickly. Here's the key messages for Tropical Depression Alberta. You can pause this to take a chance to read it. But on the left is in English and on the right is in Spanish. Here's Invest 92L, formerly Disturbance 1. Uh, you can see it's a little bit better organized, trying to close off that low pressure system near the surface. It does increase its thunderstorm activity at the moment. Like I said, it could because it's going to be interacting with the more warmer waters of the Gulf Stream just off the east coast of Florida and north of the Bahamas. And it's doing just that. National Hurricane Center is giving it a 40% chance of developing over the next two and seven days. Uh, but it really only has another day or so before it makes landfall with the United States. As you can see here in our spaghetti track guidance models, tropical storm form uh, is like, unlikely based on the model intensity guidance, but it is just under the cusp. So any spark of intense thunderstorms with winds greater than 40 miles an hour could trigger this one. Now, tropical depression uh, disturbance two, just in the Gulf of Honduras has a 20% chance of developing over the next two days and now a 50% chance of developing over the next five days as it moves, continues moving northwest into the southern Gulf of Mexico in the wake of Tropical Storm Alberto. It's pretty much like a deja vu scenario, potentially. So we'll look at the models. The GFS, purple is 92L, black is Disturbance 2, and then the rest of our hexagons are our tropical waves. A lot of moisture with Disturbance number two, we have a lot of dry air trying to infiltrate Invest 92L, so that's why it's a, there's a good chance that if it becomes a system, it might only be a tropical depression and not a tropical storm, per se. Both regions have pockets of low wind shear environments that it's going to be working with for intensification. So a day from now, tomorrow, Friday, June 21st, we see 92L right near the border of Florida and Texas with a very pinpoint piece of vorticity, maybe a tropical uh, depression at that point just before landfall. And then we have our Central American gyro disturbance too over the Yucatan Peninsula. And then by the time we get to two days from now, it is in the Bay of Campeche, southwestern portions of the Gulf of Mexico, trying to consolidate that area of very large spin like we saw Alberto do. It's got a large envelope of moisture to work with, so the amount of rain that you saw from Alberta, expect the same amount as this system comes on shore, even if it doesn't become a named system. It will have the low wind shear environment, so it's a matter of will it have enough time over water to consolidate its low pressure system like Alberto did, 
uh, and if it does, the next name on the list would be uh, would be Beryl if Invest 92L doesn't take Beryl. And if Beryl does form from 92L, this could become Chris, which we can see here by the time we get to day three on Sunday the 23rd. The vorticity on the GFS model does tighten. Will it be enough to become a tropical storm? That is still the question. Then on Monday, we'll have made landfall as a, either a tropical storm, a non-entity, or just an open wave at that point. And our focus then will be the tropical waves are going to be moving through the Caribbean at that point. As you can see here on day five, not expecting much development from them, at least on this model run. But there's a small chance of possibility, which we'll see on the ensemble models. And then here's day seven. If we look at the European model, pretty much the same thing as we saw on the GFS model. We see Disturbance 2 coming up the U Central America into the Gulf of Mexico. We see the brief interaction of 92L trying to become something before making landfall, and then our tropical waves not doing much on this model run. But if, like I said, if we look at the ensemble models, the the intensity of the storms don't look too impressive so don't expect any hurricanes barely tropical storm force if they become anything but then our tropical waves are showing some signs of potential development as well on the ensemble model so we'll keep an eye on that but we're looking like we're coming to the end of this madden julian oscillation peak and we're going to go into a little bit of a uh, quiet period as we go into the last week of june into the first week of July. So we'll continue to monitor Invest 92L to see if it can become Beryl. If not, Disturbance 2 has the better chance at 50% over the next seven days. And we'll continue to monitor those tropical waves as they come off the coast of Africa and move through the Atlantic into the Caribbean. We saw Alberto, Bert, Beryl, and Chris would be next if our next two systems become named. So we'll keep an eye on that for you. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on Deciphering Weather, so if you'd like to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you do like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you, and please vote. Have a great day.